Okay, uh, today we're going to demonstrate card exchange. The current version is 9.3.037. So this particular version of card exchange will link to basically any database, Excel, Access, Oracle, SQL, or any ODBC source, and it will also do MyFair encoding. So you've got a wizard, so it will prompt you to do everything that you need to do, or you can, if you're a more advanced user, you can choose to do everything manually. So if we just click on new card here and the create a card wizard pops up. So we'll just put this in as a demo and you can also choose to associate it with particular groups if you've got lots of card designs set up. So it's very easy to keep all of your designs managed. So here you can ask the wizard to do everything for you or you can um, skip the wizard and do everything manually in the card designer, or if you're a more advanced user, or if you've got an existing design set up, then you can use this one here. So I'll just show you the wizard today so that you can see how easy it is to do. So you can choose landscape or portrait, single or double-sided, we'll just go with the standard landscape single-sided for this one. And then you can connect to a database, or, or sorry, to an internal database, or your own database, or you can say that you don't want to connect it to any database at all. So if we choose your own database, and then we can just add a new one, database type, and you can see here all of the different available database sources, so SQL Lite, SQL Server, Postgres SQL, Paradox, Oracle, ODBC, MySQL, Access, all types of access, Ingress, all types of Excel, DB2 or data source plugin or a CSV, so comma separated value. So for this, we'll just choose an Excel spreadsheet and we will um, create a new spreadsheet for this. And we'll call that demo as well. So then we'll just open that spreadsheet and as with any database, you need to have a unique identifier. So if we just put in a unique column and then name, position, company, about typing there. And so the unique column will just be a, a sequential number basically, but Card Exchange can allocate that number for you. We'll show that later on. So if we save those changes, and then we'll just select that as the database, and then you can actually work with multiple worksheets within that spreadsheet. Uh, we'll just use sheet one, and here we tell Card Exchange that the unique column is the primary key for that database. So these ones here will tick these three because we're going to see these in the preview here. Uh, we don't need to see unique, uh, and then we'll allow editing database records. You've also got, um, you can set up users so everybody can have very specific permissions within the software. Um, or if indeed you don't want anybody editing the database, you can just untick that and it's print only. And here we have primary keys generated by the database. Or if you were using, for example, student or worker ID, then you might want to say enter primary keys manually. So you can set particular columns to be visible or editable. So if you've said that you want to be able to edit the database, but there are specific fields that you don't want somebody to be able to edit, you can choose them here. You can also work with drop down menus, look up tables, all sorts of other things. Um, and then you can set up storage items. So if you wanted to print a or sorry, store a print date or the chip serial number of the card or basically any information that you wanted to store at the time of printing, you can set this up here. So if we then click on next, then you can choose if you want to add a background color, uh, obviously bearing in mind the limitations of direct card printers, they won't go right to the edge, but um, you'll get as good as with the modern day printers. You can also choose background images and choose a logo. So if we choose a logo and we'll go with the ID Card Center logo. So if you've got the field separated on your 
um, in your data source, then you might want to use what's called concatenation. And that basically enables you to combine two fields into one and, um, and keep it a lot easier to, um, to make that design. You can also use a photo on the card. Um, and what we can do is we can say that the photo is linked to the unique column. So if we had a photo which is referenced in that column, then it will automatically match up. But I'll show you more of that shortly. So you can also add signatures. Um, you can capture signatures as well if you need to, um, but we, we're not going to do this on this particular design. And then here we have any fields that we might, might want to print on the card. So we're going to include company, name, and position in this instance. Add barcodes, so 2D and 1D. Uh, and again, you can choose these to be linked to any particular field within your uh, data source. And you can see here you've got multiple uh, barcode fonts that you can use. And the same goes for 2D as well. So you can choose if you want to print a custom QR code at the time of printing. There are limitations for 2D barcodes for different versions of Card Exchange. Again, if you need to discuss that, then get in touch. So then you can launch the Card Designer Wizard, so uh, window, sorry, um, which will enable you to change any of the setup on that design. It is a separate element of the program, which will load up now. Um, but you can see here it, it's done the basic layout um, and then we can then change anything that we need to. So we can change the font um, and it's got a very much an, a sort of Office 2010 feel really. Um, so it's very familiar for most users. So if they're batch selected then you can change multiple sizes at the same time. Um, so your fields are all over the place. Holding down shift will enable you to batch select or you can do it with control. And then you can then say you want them all equal, what height, width, you want to align to the left. And then what we can also do is so that we can tidy them all up, we can hold it down shift we can say align to the left, and then we also want to distribute vertically. And this then will make sure that they're all evenly spaced. So we can move those to wherever we want, want to move them. And then we can change the photo size if we wanted to. Um, we can do anything that we want with that, really. So you can specify the crop ratio of the photo. So this ensures that they're all consistent and uh, at the standard width and height of a, a photo. So here you say where the photos are stored. So this is currently linking to the Bureau Images folders of Photos folder and it's linked to the unique column. So we'll say yes to save the changes and here you can see on the left hand side all of the different designs that we've got set up and they're all within specific subgroups. Okay, so we have our design here. Um, it's currently linked to a completely empty database. So we can add a new record here. And if we just put in some details, Okay, and you can see here we've made a mistake here, and so we can just update that, click on update, and it makes those changes automatically. So currently in the photos folder, we don't have a, um, we don't have any photos. Okay, so currently we don't have a photo. Um, the reason for that is because the photo is linked to the unique identifier. So if we look in the relevant photo folder, you can see we've got here some photos. Um, but what we need to do is 
to make sure that this is linked with the identifier. So if we just rename this to number one, then go back to card exchange, press F5 to refresh, and that automatically picks up that photo. What we can also then do is we can then edit that photo if we wanted to crop that down to a specific head size, and you can see it's keeping the aspect ratio of three to four. So it's a really useful function within Card Exchange. There is also a, an automatic cropped face, um, and you can also take a photo if you've got a, a USB web camera hooked up to the PC itself. So Card Exchange will print to any Windows printer driver. Um, the standard card size is a plastic card, basically, which is CR80. Um, so that's 86 0.4 by 54 millimeters. We'll just double check that we've got the privacy set up as the correct printer. And you can also in here, you can choose all your contactless and mag encoding options. And then we can also go into the printer properties. So rather than going into devices and printers and changing everything there, we can check it's set to simplex. It's a YMCKO. We can also set the contrast and um, brightness, etc. So it's very easy to manage everything for the printer using Card Exchange and save you going elsewhere within Windows. So if we then just click on Print Card, and so we have just put this ribbon in. So what it is doing is it's it's just scrolled on to the beginning of the YMCKO. And so you can hear it and you can see it flashing. So the Everless Primacy is what we're using currently. Um, this will print up to 210 cards an hour in full colour to one side. Um, it'll now do, if I remember rightly, about 1200 cards in monochrome with the latest firmware. So the cards are instantly dry as soon as they're printed. And so take that out and you can see there. Okay, so that basically is card exchange. It is very, very easy to use, um, extremely functional and will basically enable you to do anything that you need to do with your ID cards. If you've got any questions, then do contact ID Card Centre and we would be more than happy to help. Thanks for your time.